Hey guys, it's Amelia here from the Yak Team, and I'm here to explain to you the desktop version of Yak, how it works, and a couple of its features, the main features, and some important things you should know. So first things first, we can see that Yak is organized into an inbox of conversations and not individual messages. What I mean by that is, if I click into any one of these, it's actually a full conversation that I've had with this selected person, not just an individual message. This is what we wanted to stray away from, unlike an, unlike an email inbox where every single message is sent to you or is organized by time and that it was sent to you instead of threading. We've neatly organized every single message so that you can easily click into any conversation you'd like with someone, much like a personal, personal uh, private messaging system uh, for each one of these and view the conversation in order as it was sent. So to be able to send a message, you go to the bottom right hand corner to create new message. And let's say I want to send another message to Jordan. I can click his name after searching for his name. And I have two options. I can just send a voice message or a screen share. For now, let's just send a voice message. You can see the audio visualizer actually picking up your voice. And I'll show you in a little bit how to set up your devices so you know you have the correct ones. But let's so go ahead and send this message. And just like that, I'm sending a message to Jordan. In the conversation, you'll see it appear. And in just a little bit, the transcription will be will appear at the bottom once it's been fully processed. We know a message has been delivered by this gray check mark and we know a message has been listened to once, uh, once it, the double check mark that are yellow appears. Now within here this conversation I have two options. I can quickly reply to any one of his messages by clicking this arrow and the voice message prompt will appear by default and I can have the option to snooze a message. So let's say this, this message was sent at the end of the day. I can snooze this message for tomorrow it'll automatically set for a 9 a.m. reminder or for later and it'll default to a two a reminder within two hours of clicking the button next I can decide to play any single message by clicking but. the playhead at the right far side of the message and here we have the transcription snippet now we can tell that this, this snippet kind of cuts short because we have the ellipses here and we know it runs seven seconds we we can kind of tell that there's more to be said we can click the more button to view the entire transcription and from here we're free to manually copy the, the f full transcription. But in a much easier way is actually to quick, or quickly right click the message, the yak, and click qu copy transcript. Here we'll get notified that the transcription has been copied to our clipboard and we're free to paste it anywhere we please. Um, another feature that we have is forwarding or sharing. Um, within sharing you can actually forward to p teammates, save the message to your device, and a couple of other things. Let's click the share button to see. So here is a list of all the people that I can forward it to. And the list is ordered by recency. So these are the most recent people that I've messaged on the Yak. And I can scroll down the entire list and it'll show me my entire contacts list. So let's say we want to send this over to Heather. We can forward that to her really quickly. And we'll get notified that it's been forwarded. Let's share again. Now we have the option to copy the link of this Yak. With every single Yak that's sent, we're able to generate a public link so that when, when that happens, we can share it in any space that we'd like. For example, Slack, an email, a private conversation with um, you know, someone else that has to do with the message, etc. Let's click Copy Link, and we'll get notified that the link has been copied. Last thing we can do is save any yak, whether it's a screen share, a video, a photo, or a voice message, to our device to be able to have the raw file and save it anywhere we'd like. And that's conversation view. Now, to be able to send a message to someone else, click new message and your message uh, contacts list will appear. Let's say I want to send a message to Justin. And let's also say that I realize I have something to say and it has to do with Heather as well. This is what's called a broadcast message where I can send a one to many type message, unlike a group message, where in this one to many, one -to -many scenario, they can each reply but Justin won't see Heather's reply and vice versa. So I can click record and easily start a message and send it to them. And now we can see it appears individually and in each into each one of their conversations respectively. Now let's say I instead would rather would much rather have a group because I know this conversation or this question that I pose, whatever it may have been, is much deeper than just a one message. I can go to the top, click the plus sign, and actually create a group. Here we'll be able to name a group, test. And if we don't have a photo to edit or to add to the group, we automatically generate one based on the first letter of the name that you give it. Here we can add a teammate. So let's add Heather and Justin, like we said before. And just like that, we have a group created. 
and we can hit save changes and it'll create a group now let's say we accidentally just added one person or we have a habit of forming groups and we only want to form a group with one other person this actually isn't possible because this is technically a one-to-one -one message which we already have built into the system where it's just a one-to-one -one conversation right here last thing we can do is click the plus sign and add people to our team here we're free to add the person's email and they'll get a personal invite in their inbox in which they have the download link available for any device that they're using and some setup instructions and they'll be automatically added to your team. So as soon as they log into Yak, or before they even log into Yak, you can start messaging them immediately. A couple things I want to go over in the settings. Here's where you s mess with the speaker settings, the microphones, like I mentioned before. So you make sure you're using the correct device to record uh, vo voice messages. In language, you have the option to change the language that each Yak is transcribed into. You have the option to launch at login for Yak. And some advanced settings in terms of quality, saving, uh, power saving mode, and experimental features. Last but not least, we have the sign out button. And at the bottom below that, in the section, we have check for updates. If you click that and you're up to date, you'll get this prompt. If you click that and you're not up to date, it'll actually start downloading the latest update and install and close Yak for you and then reopen with the latest update. Last thing I'd like to show you is how public link sharing works, voice memo works, and screen shares. Public link is just that. I can send a message and have a link generated from any yak that I send to public link. Just as you see here, link has been copied. Voice memos is voice memos basically to yourself. So this is a form of note taking. If you have any things you'd like to send to yourself, make note of, etc. You can send that to myself. And I would like to show you how screen sharing works. So let's click Justin really quick. And to the right of recording your voice, I have the option to do a screen share. You'll know that you'll be able to do a screen share once this is highlighted. Click record again, and we even give you a preview of what you're about to record. You can change the display and the camera if you have one, and hit start. And just like that, you're starting a screen share. You're free to annotate, point things out. And most of the time, we're probably on some sort of web browser. So we can hide the top to access the tabs behind it. And as you saw, I cleared out all the annotations by clicking the drawing button once again. We have varying sizes of the drawing annotation from here to this, so anything in between is free. And lastly, if we want to cancel a yak, click the X in the left, far left side of the yak screen recording bar, and we click the send a message in the middle. Okay, and that's the entire desktop app. This is basically the main important parts you need to know to start operating Yak effectively, efficiently, and help increase the productivity for your team. I hope this helps. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you later.